Python is the most widely used programming language in today's upgrowing world. Because of its flexibility, wide range of variety, beginner friendly list, and easy to implement features. Since 2003, Python programming language entered the most popular language and this popularity increasing linearly. Fortune 500 companies like Instagram, Facebook, Google, Spotify, Quora are currently using Python. Let me tell you what you will learn from this session. You will learn the basic of Python, how Python came into the picture and why Python is so popular, right? And in the last, you will able to do some project using Python that will help you to understand all the concept you have learned so far in the tutorial, right? So first in our agenda, we will start with introduction to Python. Then you will see that why should you learn Python? Then we will see history of Python. What is the history? How Python came? Then uh, I will give you some reason why Python is so popular. Then I will show how you can install Python in your local system. Then we will see how many users are actually using Python. What's the stats for that? And then we will see some basic syntax for Python uh, and how can you use variable and how to use for loop and all. Then we will see list, set, tuple, okay? And then we will do four projects. That is word count. Second is guess the word. And third is calculator. That is also using Python. And lastly, we will do face recognition using Python and OpenCV, okay? So let's get started with the session. And let me tell you what is Python. Python is basically a very popular high level object oriented and interpreted language. Okay. When I'm saying high level, what does that mean? Suppose you have no idea about the coding language, how you can use a code, how you can do a code, right? So if you start your journey with Python, it is just a like a normal English you wrote, right? The normal way you write your English, the same way you can do the code as well in Python. Okay, so this is how Python is very flexible and beginner friendly, right? And using Python, you can have so many libraries. I will show you all the libraries, what you can do with Python. So these are the main reason why Python becomes so popular with days, right? So what is the history of Python? When you say this is the language name is Python. So it's obvious that we all think that why Python? Right. So the inventor of Python is Rossum, who uh, invented Python in 1989. And Rossum used to love watching comedy movies from late 70s. Right. He needs to he needed a short, unique and slightly mysterious name for this language. Basically, he was searching for a name for his language he was inventing that should be very short, unique and slightly mysterious. Right. Obviously, Python is a mysterious name. Right. And uh, in that time, he was watching Monty Python's Flying Circus. And from that, he thought that he can use the Python name for his language. And this is how he ended up using Python for his language. And this is how Python came into the picture, right? So I hope uh, you got to know that how Python came in the picture, right? Now we will see why should you learn? Why should you learn Python? What is the reason that, yeah, you, we, have, we have multiple options that you can learn Java, Python, C, C++. But why we are saying that you should learn Python? The main reason is that Python is simple and beginner friendly language. Okay. And if you see, if you think about a coder, the first thing came into our mind that they will work with thousands of lines of code, right? But for Python, no, that's not the case. You can write your code in a very short way, right? Your code can be very short using some predefined function, predefined uh, library that we have in Python. Okay. So these are the main reason why Python becomes so popular. Okay. And if you go for a data science uh, part, data science domain, that in that part, we need to use so many mathematical computational. If you want to do some exploratory data analysis, we need some stats concepts. So in that case, we have some library in Python who actually help us to do that mathematical computational easily. Right. So these are the main reason why we want Python 
to our uh, to as our language okay and if you are a gamer if you want to have some good cool graphics for your game yes python has some good graphics some cool graphics that you can use for your game and if you are a develop web developer if you are a software developer if you want to develop software that is also can be done using python okay so basically you can use python in a multiple ways in multiple domain so this is how python is getting the popularity python is so popular because of its largest largest community for learners and the collaborators it has the largest community right where all the members are actually uh, investing or doing some some of kind of a research for python and one language become more popular for his community right so this is why python is so popular and python is easy to learn and it has a usable flexibility right and it supports big data machine learning and cloud computing all the new upgrowing technologies are supported by python so you can say this is the main reason why python becoming so popular because it is supporting all the new upcoming uh, domain upcoming technologies right python is open source you don't need to pay for python it is free of cost you can use at any time okay it has a huge number of python libraries and framework we have lots of framework we can use it that is also for free and it has a huge number of libraries suppose you need to do a mathematical computational you can use a library suppose you need to visualize your data you can go for some library that is already matplotlib or seaborn that is already predefined in python if you want to do a deep learning code if you want to build your model that's also possible using python libraries right this is why python becoming so popular okay and python supports automations as well so this is how this is the reason the python is basically now it's a heart of the uh, software engineers you can say right now we will see how can you install python so installing python what do you need to do you need to go to their official website that in python python.org and there you will get the link and you just need to download that's all you need to do it's very simple to download python in your local system okay but yeah we we use some uh, integrated development environment for python if you want to use some integrated uh, development environment in your local system for that you need to install python first to your local system this is the main criteria okay so for id we have some id we have pycharm pycharm of each pycharm is one of the most popular id you can say and now comes anaconda anaconda is basically used for the data science par uh, purpose if you are a data scientist or if you are aspiring data scientist you can use anaconda as well right and there comes the google colab google colab is provided by google and where you will uh, you don't need to install anything right you can do it uh, online and it provides you a good amount of ram it provides you gpu and tpu as well so we use some of the time we use google colab for the deep learning purpose where we, we need to use gpu so in our code we will use google colab right now i will show you what is the statistical measurement of python user right i was saying that python is so popular python is so flexible everyone is using python but why you guys should believe me right so let's see on the graph that how actually python is becoming more popular with days so you can see in the graph after 2016 there is a straight increment in the graph right where all the you can say it's showing till 2018 the python is continuously increasing python users number of python users is continuously increasing right so this is actually proving that python is becoming more uh, more popular day by day because of its all flexibilities now we will talk about the basic syntax for, for python so what basic syntax we have when we start talking about any programming language first we need to think of how you can store your data right for storing your data we use variable right so if you want to store your data in any container so that is called as variable right so variable are used as container to store the data values python has no command to declare a variable 
uh, for Java, for C, you need to declare your variable. But for the Python, there is no syntax that you need to declare your variable. A variable is created when you assign the value to it, right? Suppose here you can see that I write a is equals to 5. At that time, I already created my variable, right? So I use b is equals to 0 0.4. In, all, uh, in that time also, I created b as a variable which contains 0 0.4 value, right? And if you want to print the value, you need to write print and then you need to pass the variable name, right? This is how we can use variable in Python. Right now, there is when we talk about variable, there are multiple types of uh, variable we have that is known as data types. Data types are used to classify or categorize of your data items. Okay, data types represent value which determines what operation can be performed on the data. Okay, in Python, data types is assigned when you assign the value to the variable. So basically, if you want to assign a variable, suppose you want to have a variable int, right? So you, if you want to use that, uh, suppose a is equals to you want that a will be an int variable. So in other language, you need to write that a variable is an integer variable. But for Python, what do you need to do? You just need to write the variable name and you need to put the value. It will automatically fetch the type of the variable, right? So this is why we say that Python is very flexible, right? You don't need to remind so many syntax. You don't need to go for so many uh, complex part to execute your code. Right. If you want to use a string, what you need to do? You need to write the variable name. Suppose here I write C is equals to your data, right? In between a comma. Okay. So this is how you can write a string. Okay. Your Python will take that variable as a string variable, right? So using uh, Python, you don't need to use any syntax for your variable. If you want to put a particular data types, you don't need to write any extra line of code. You need to just pass your data to the variable. Okay. And after uh, like initializing your variable, if you want to see what type of variable you have initialized. So we have a type function to see that. Right. If you want to see what type of a variable I have, suppose equals to five. Right. I want to see what type of a variable it is. Right. What we will do? We will use type function. We need to write type and then we need to pass our variable name. Suppose for A, it is integer. For B, it is float. And for C, it is string. Right. This is how we can use Python data types and we can check what type of variable I have. What is my data types for the particular variable? Okay. Now we will see some basic syntax for Python string. So if you want to go for data science domain, if you want to do some project in the Python, you need to have a very strong uh, hands on on a string. How you can manipulate string, how you can initialize a string how you can uh, slice a string, right? We will see all the things uh, in the code file as well. First, I will show you in theory how we will do all this operation in string using Python. Suppose I write a data that is our variable. Data is our variable now. name is equals to hello, welcome to great learning. Okay, so hello, welcome to great learning will be our data. And if we want to print that, what we will do, we will write print and then we will pass data, right? And we will get the output, hello, welcome to create learning. This is how you can initialize a single line string, okay? Suppose you have a multi-line string, you have a paragraph, right? So in that time, we need to use three comma. Okay, where you will use welcome to great learning, then I use a comma. So if you use a same comma, both the, both the places, that time it will not take as a string. Okay, so be sure, be uh, just to remind in your, uh, like just to remind that when we use multi-line string, we use three commas, right? So what I did, I use data and then I use three string, then I write welcome to create learning and in today's session we will discuss about python project for beginners okay i want to print this multi line stream data okay and after that what i did i just print the data 
So I got welcome to great learning. In today's session, we will discuss about Python project for beginners. Now we will see how can you iterate a string, right? So iterating a string is simple. The way you iterate our arrays, right? So basically to iterate a string, we use for loop. Okay. So in the here we use for i, the index it will run through in range, the length of the data we have. So if you want to see what length of the string you have, you need to use length function, right? You don't need to write a program from the scratch to get the length of the data. So length and the data. Okay, so you will get the length of the data. Suppose my case, it will be 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so suppose my case take 10. Okay, so your range will be 0 to 10. Okay, so now you, you want to print the each and every element of your string. Right, so I use data and then in the uh, bracket, I mention the index number. That is your i. That will iterate. So first I will get h, e, L, L, O and the continue, right? W, E, L, C, O, M, E and then it continues. This is how you can iterate through your strings. It's just normal like an array you, the way you iterate through an array, right? Now we will see how can you slice your string. If you want to slice your thing, a string, how can you do that? So basically first start, before start with the string slicing, so let me just uh, introduce one thing. In string slicing, we start our index from zero, not from the one. So this, this is the main thing you need to remind when you start slicing your string. And when we put the end uh, index for the string, it will go uh, before that. Suppose we put four, it will go till three, right? So what we need to do, if we need to slice our string, we need to pass the variable name. So here my variable name is b, right? In the bracket, in the square bracket, I use 1. So I want my second from the second element 2 till 4, right? So 4 matlab, it will go till 3, right? So 1, 2, 3. So we have e, l, l. So h is, h, h index is 0, e index is 1, l index is 2, uh, again l index is 3 and o index is 4. So it will go till three index. So I, we will get ELL as a output, right? If you want to go for a negative indexing, what do you need to do? The negative indexing starts with minus one. Okay, I want void. So first you need to, I just want from minus six to minus one. So it will take WORLD. So we can slice your string through positive indexing and through negative indexing as well. So it's up, it's up on you how you can want to slice your string. So if you want to see the length of the string, again, we use length function to see our, what is the length of our string, right? So for my string, it's the length is 30. Okay. So let's see what is Python list. Okay. So now we will see some of the predefined classes we have in Python. So what is list? So Python list provides a concise way to create list which is ordered and changeable. Okay. So basically Python list is something where you, if you have a, a large amount of data, right? That time you can't use variable, right? For variable, you can uh, just store one data. But if you have apple, orange, uh, banana, all the fruits, so many fruits if you want, if you have. And if you want to store them, how can you store them? You use list. And list contains the duplicate element. If you have a duplicate element in your data, it will contain that as well. List elements can be fetched using the index number. Again, the indexing number for list also start from zero, right? If you want to fetch some particular element, particular data from your list, you can do that using list index. And list can have null elements as well. So list contains null elements. So if you have any null element in your data, list will contain that. Okay. And the syntax for the list is that bracket, square bracket, and you need to write your data. Writing that square bracket, the Python will understand you initialize a list. We will see in the code as well how actually practically we do that. Right. Now we will see that how you can initialize a list. Again. Initializing a list is 
you need to write the list name. For my case, it is fruit list. Then you need to write that square bracket and you need to pass your data. For my case, apple, lychee, mango, banana and chili. These are my data. So I want to put them in a list to store all the information. Right now I print my list that is food list. I got apple, lychee, mango, banana and chili. And my type of list is basically it's a string type list. Okay, you can have integer and float type list as well. So for again, you, uh, if you want to have integer type list, you don't need to write anything. Just put your data on the uh, bracket and it will automatically take that list. Right. If you want to see the length of the list, again, we use length function. And if you want to add elements, suppose after initializing of your series, you want to add some element to the list. How you can do that? We use dot append function to add some element after you initialize, initialize something to your list. So fruit list dot append and then grips. Right. This is how we can append a new data from to our list. Okay. So in now in the now you can see before we have apple, lychee, mango, banana and cherry. Right now we have apple, lychee, mango, banana, cherry, grapes. Okay. This is how you can add a, uh, you can add extra element to the list. Right. And one more thing, list maintains the insertion order. When I'm talking about insertion order, means when you insert something to your list, right, you are added apple, lychee and banana, right? So it will, the same way it will store your data, apple, lychee, banana. It will not change the insertion order of your data. So now we will set Python set, right? So what, why we need set when we have list, right? At any way, they are going to store the large amount of data you have. But when you go for any interview, please keep in mind that the main difference between list and set is list contain duplicate element, but the set does not contain duplicate elements, right? If you have a duplicate elements in your data, it will automatically eliminate that data and it will take only single copy of that data, right? And uh, suppose you have a large amount of data, right? You, ha you have a virtual library, okay? So in that library, you have lots of books. So maybe you have a repeated book in your database. How can you check that, right? So using set, if you pass your least value, so that time it will automatically eliminate the uh, duplicate value. It will take only single copy of that. So you will get all the distinct books you have. Right, so set is an unordered and unindexed index collection which is written in curly brackets. We initialize set in curly brackets, right? Set is based on mathematical set concept, the concept we have in mathematics, and set also allows null values, right? And set does not maintain the insertion order. This is the main big difference between list and set, right? Set will contain duplicate value and obviously will maintain your insertion order, right? And for set, it does not contain the duplicate value and it does not maintain the insertion order as well. So according to your uh, usage, according to your requirement, you will use list or set, right? So now we will see how we, uh, we will can initialize set, right? For uh, initialize set we need to use curly bracket so fruit leaves and under the curly bracket i will pass apple lychee mango banana the fruit list i have okay so you can see it takes mango banana le uh, mango apple lychee cherry banana it is not maintaining the insertion order the way i insert my data right if you want to check the length of the set you need to use length function and if you want to add something, there is one more catch in the list. If you want to add something, we use dot append function. But for the same, if we want to add something, we use dot add function, right? These are the main three difference between list and set, right? When you go for any interview in Python, so they will ask you about this basic questions. So please be uh, sure about these 
basic concept that what is the difference between list and saint right and here i add extra element that is orange you can see my first set was mango apple lychee cherry banana and the next i got orange as well in the list right next comes python tuple so when we have list set so why we need tuple so basically tuple is an order and unchangeable collection which is written in round brackets okay so basically if you want to add something after you initialize your tuple if you want to add some data to your tuple that is not allowed right it will not give you that uh, usage that with that facility to add something after you initialize your tuple okay so please be keep in mind that what are the main difference between list set and tuple and according to the your uses your requirement you can use this concepts right so here how can we initialize tuple we use fruit list that is is equals to that first round bracket when you write this round bracket your python will understand yes you are initializing a tuple okay so then we will pass our data our fruit list apple lychee mango banana and cherry and when i print it you can see we got it apple lychee mango banana and cherry right if you want to check the length of the tuple what you need to do you need to use length function and then you need to pass the tuple variable that is fruit list and i got my i have a five elements in my tuple right so these are the main difference main reason why we use list set and tuple now comes the concept of python dictionary so why we need python dictionary python dictionary is basically it's it's a unordered collection of key value pairs enclosed with curly brackets right so here is the catch we have key value pairs right suppose let me give you an example for that you can understand why actually we need a uh, dictionary suppose you have a list of fruits and you have a like uh, number of fruits how many fruits you have suppose apple have 10 orange have 20 and uh, for banana has 30 if you want to store them but for list set and tuple you can't use uh, that volume right you you can't use those uh, you can't store your uh, data like apple is 10 orange is 20 or banana is 30 right in that case we use dictionary for dictionary there is two concept that is key and value maybe your banana will be your key that fruit list will be your key and the number of amount you have that is that will be your value but be sure when you are using key key should be always unique you cannot repeat key right repeat you cannot repeat key and key should be always always it should be unique but for the value that can be repeated right let's see how we can use like dictionary right for dictionary what we need to use we need to use that curly bracket and if your key is a string value then you need to pass the same way you need to pass your string value for me apple will be my key and then colon you need to write colon and then you need to pass the value how much apple you have i have 10 apple so 10 will be my value again for orange orange will be the key and 20 will be my value right this is how you can initialize the dictionary but if you want to take all the keys from the dictionary how you can do that taking all the keys from the dictionary we use dot keys function it will return all the key you have in your dictionary in my fruit variable i have apple orange banana and guava these uh, four are my keys right so it will return apple orange banana and guava and for the values you need to see and if you want to get the values so we use dot values function it will return all the value you have right for apple i have 10 for orange i have 20 for banana i have 30 and for guava i have 40 right it will return all the values like 10 20 30 and 40 right this is how you can extract keys and values from the dictionary okay so if you want to modify a dictionary how you can do that right so first i want to add a new element new key to my dictionary you can do that how you need to write 
your variable name for the dictionary. For me, it's fruit. Then in the bracket, I need to mention the key. For me, the key is mango. So I will put mango on that. And how much mango you have? How many mangoes you have? So I have 50 mangoes. So I will uh, write that equals to 50. So the way, the, the same way it will take the new element to your dictionary. Now you can see in my dictionary I have apple, orange, banana, guava and mango. And now comes if you want to update your uh, number of values. The, suppose in the respect to apple you want to change. Uh, before you have 10 apple. Now you have 100 apple. You buy some more apple you want to add them. How can you add them? In that case you can update that. You can use the same fruit and the key you want to update for me it's apple i want to update that is is equals to 100 right this is how you can update your values in the dictionary okay so i hope guys you understand what are the difference between least say tuple and dictionaries and what are the function we have in these uh, data structures right so you can see if we want to merge two dictionary, how you can do that? We use dot update function. So I have fruit one dictionary, I have fruit two dictionary. Now I want to merge them uh, both, right? How can you do that? You need to use fruit one, then dot update your second dictionary. So for my second dictionary is fruit two. I and then you will get. In the fruit one, all the elements you have in the board dictionary. You can see apple, orange, banana, guava, all came under fruit one, right? And there comes if you want to delete some particular element from your dictionary. How you can do that? For that, we use dot pop function. We all quite familiar with pop function, right? In the dictionary also, we use dot pop function. So we use dot pop the your uh, dictionary name that is fruit then dot pop and which key you want to remove not the value i want to remove orange key so i will mention orange right so you can see in my dictionary we don't have orange right so these are the functions we have in dictionaries okay now we will see all of these things in google colab right how you can do all these things practically in Google Colab. Then we will move into Python projects, right? Now we will see all the basic syntax of Python, how you can initialize a variable, how can you see the data types of the variable, least, set, dictionary and tuple implementation, right? So here we are going to use Google Colab. So if you want to use Google Colab, how you can do that? First go to your favorite browser, then just write Google Colab and after searching Google Colab, you will get a link colab.research.google.com, right? In that link, you need to go Google Colab, then you need to click on New Notebook, right? This is all you need to do when you are going to use Google Colab, okay? And if you want to use some other ID, that is also possible. For that, you need to install Python in your local system, right? And if you want to change Google Colab name, you can double click over here. That is untitled. It's already written. If you want to change it to something Python, so you can do that like this, right? So there is one more option in Google Colab. You can see in runtime, you need to click in runtime and then you will get all the options right if you want to run all the cell at a time you need to use run all and if you want to change your runtime type so if maybe you are working with some deep learning code or machine learning you need a gpu this is how you can change your run type you can see we have gpu and tpu right according to your users you can use respectively but here we don't need a gpu or tpu we will use none okay so then save this is how you can use Google Colab. And after doing the code, if you want to download your uh, notebook, you can do it. It will give you .ipynb file. You need to download .ipynb. That is how you can use Google Colab. So already I made my notebook. That is for Python for beginners. Let's see how we can do it. So you can see in a variable, I use 
5. I pass a value that is 5 for my A, right? And for I <clears throat> pass 0 0.4. And for C, we have Rhea. I use different type of data just to show you how actually Python initialize the variables, right? Let me run the code. Let's see what we will get. And just to print your variable and print to anything in uh, Python, what you need to do? You need to write print and then in the parenthesis, you need to pass your variable name. And if you don't want to use a print a statement, what you need to do? You just need to write A and it will just print your value, variable value, right? But one thing, if you need to want to print A, B, C at a time, right? If you write A, B and then C, right? Let's see what it will give. It will give only the C value, right? It will not print A and B. So if you want to print all the three values that time you need to print, you need to actually use print function. Right? I hope it's clear when you need to use print and when you think that you, you need to just uh, print all the elements you have. That time you need to use print function. But if you have one variable you need to print, you just can write the name of that variable and it will print automatically. Right? So these are the main difference uh, guys you really need to understand if you want to go for any interview for Python. Right? So you, you, got, you, you can see that we got the value of variable that for a is equals to 5, b is equals to 0 0.4 and c is equals to the string character, right? Now I will show how you can use string, a uh, one line string. If you want to initialize a one line string, you need to write the variable name that is data and then I pass hello welcome to great learning, right? The same thing I uh, say in the presentation as well. Let's see how it's going to initialize here. Yeah, my data is initialized with the string data I provided. That is hello, welcome to great learning, right? Now we will see the multi-line, right? The welcome to great learning in today's session, we'll discuss about Python project for beginners, right? In this case, what we will do? Data and then the three commas I told you. So let, let me show you if we don't use three commas, what it will happen. So if I put one comma, right and here also i will have one comma right so you can see in today's session it actually count all the commas right all the commas it is counting and it is not taking the whole string right so in that case we need to use this this syntax just to take all the lines we have in the data right so let's see yeah, it took my data. So please remind that when you, you want to use a multi-line string, you need to use the syntax, right? Now I want to iterate through my string, right? I will use for loop and you can see, I told you, it will get all the, even the space is also came in between that, right? You are iterating through space as well. If you have space in your data, that will, that will also iterate through the for loop. Right? Okay. Now we will see how you can use a uh, string indexing. Right? Before see the uh, negative indexing, let me show you how you can use a uh, <clears throat> positive indexing. Right? So maybe we are going to use same hello world. Right? Now I have a variable called b. Now I want to slice my variable. How you can do that? First you need to write your variable name that is b and then in the square bracket you need to specify that from which element to uh, from which element you want to slice your data. So from 2 maybe from the third element as our string index starts from 0 right. Maybe from l I want to cut my string right till l to maybe 6 right it will go till 5 right this is the catch for the uh, list indexing if you write 0 that will take you the first element if you write the last element is 6 it will go till 5 right let me just print it yeah you can see it takes l l o 
right it goes till 5 and you can see there is a space it counts the space as well okay so space is also a one index okay right i think you guys can understand if you guys have any doubt please put in the comment section below for that we can go back to you guys and give like solve your doubts as well okay now comes the negative indexing how can you do the negative indexing for the negative indexing starts with minus 1 right so i want from minus 6 to minus 1 that comes the world right so let's see what we give i want the world uh, character i want the world word from my data so i use uh, minus 6 to minus 1 you can see i got a uh, world but maybe i want to use minus 5 let's see what i will get so guys always try to play with your programming language to understand more deeply the language you are learning right so you can see i got O R L D, not the W. Right? This is how negative indexing works. Now I want to see the length of my string, right? I don't know what is the length of my string. So for that, we use length function. So length of P, that is for my case, it is 13. It's actually counting the spaces as well, right? Always remember it does not only count the character, it also counts the spaces you specified in your data, in your string. Now we will see how can you initialize a list. So I have a bun like bunch of fruits. I want to put them in a list. How we can do that? We need to do, actually I uh, take a variable that is fruit list. That is my variable name that is equals to, I mention that square bracket. When you mention the square bracket, it will automatically, Python will understand you want to use a list, right? I use apple, lychee, mango, banana and cherry, right? Okay, so these are my bunch of, uh, bunch of, uh, what to say that, uh, fruits I have, I want to store them, right? Now, let me print it. Yes, you can see I got it apple, lychee, mango, banana and chili. Right, this is actually stored in my fruit list. Right now, if I want to see the length of the list, again I need to use length function. Length and then we need to pass the list name, that is fruit list. Right, if you want to add a new uh, add data to your list, how we can do that? We need to use dot append. So we use fruit list and dot append and the grapes I want to pass. Let's see what it will give. Okay, you can see the grapes is already added in our data, in our list, right? Now comes the set concept. So I already told what's the difference between list and set. So let me try one thing. When I'm initializing that, let me just add same data to the set. Let's see how it is going to handle that. So you can see in my data, I added apple twice, right? But it did not take apple twice. It takes apple only once. So I told you, if you have a, a multiple uh, same data, it will actually re uh, eliminate that data and will it will keep only the single copy of that, right? So for that, it has apple but once, okay? So if you want to get a distinct data from your data set, that time you should go for set, okay? For set, we use curly bracket. So from basically the bracket, Python understands. If you use a square bracket, Python understands, okay, user want to use a list. If you use a curly bracket, Python says, okay, okay, the user want to use a set, right? So be careful when you are initializing the list and set and you are putting the brackets, right? And for the tuple, and if you want to add, right, before going to tuple, if you want to add something to the set, we use dot add function, right? You can see, let me execute that. Yes, you can see we got orange, right? We got orange. Uh, and the previous list as well, previous set, right? This is how we can add a new data to our set, right? Now, if we want to print the length of the set, how we will do? We will use the length function and the set variable. For my case, this is fruit list, right? Now comes tuple. 
So for tuple, if you want to add something after you initialize the data, no, it will not give you that flexibility to do that, right? So let me do that. Yes, you can see this is already initialized. And let me just try that if I can, uh, first let me, uh, okay, first let me fetch a data from the tuple, right? Suppose zero. You can see I got apple, right? The first element. Suppose I want to just change apple to um, what can be done. Suppose cat. I want a cat, okay, in my fruit list. See, I got an error that tuple object does not support item assignment because tuple is immutable, right? So always remember, you can't update tuple way after you initialize the tuple. Right? Okay. So now you will see if you want to see the length of the tuple, we use length function and then you need to pass the tuple <clears throat> you have. Right? I have fruit list. I pass that fruit list to the length. So I got 5. The length of the uh, tuple is 5. Right? Now comes the dictionary. So if you want to initialize a dictionary again, you need to use the curly bracket. But the catch for the dictionary is dictionary has key value pair. For my case, apple is my key and tail is my value, right? So here the tail, it will give as a string. No, I don't want to give it as a string. I want to give it as a number, right? Okay, so fruit list and then under the curly bracket, I use apple, that, that's my key. And the tail, it's the value of that particular key. Okay. And after that, I use orange and then 20. That is the value of orange, my orange key. And then same as for mango. Right. And always remember, key can actually have only one value, not the list of the value. Okay. So let me print it. Yes, you can see I got apple. That is 10, orange that is 20 and mango that is 100. Now let me do some operation using um, dictionaries, right? So I have my fruit list. I want to add a new key or new value to my uh, dictionary. How we can do that? Now maybe I have cat. So I am a cat lover. I want to see, I want to add cat into my food list as well. I know this is meaningless, but I'm just giving you the example. So I have 20 cat. Let me check. Yes. And now I want to print my dictionary. Okay. Yes. So you can see it added cat. That I have cat 20 cats, right? If you want to update it. No, no, I don't have 20 cat. I have get right let me update it so yes let's see what it will be yes it updated that my i have a two cat okay and if i want to add uh if i want to march to list to basically to dictionary how we can do that let me create one more dictionary for your convenience uh same maybe the same one i'm going to use right uh and let me just initialize with that name fruit list 2, right? I have the same value. Okay, so it's already initialized. Now, what I need to do, I want to have all the thing under fruit list, right? So, I will write fruit list is equals to again fruit list dot update and then I will pass my new list that is fruit list 2, right? Let's see I, what I will get and let me print my new fruit list, okay? Okay. So for my new fruit list, let's see how what I have. Okay, it's not getting printed. Why? It's not getting printed. Let me use print function. So I got none. Why it not taking 
the same values okay so let me add some other uh, values to it dog i have lion maybe and i have Okay, so I was getting a update. So why we were getting the error, right? We were getting the error because or the none one because we are actually uh, assigning the new merge list to the old one, right? For this case, you don't need to assign, right? The thing, what you need to do, that's the thing you need to remind, right? If you feel like, why I show you that error because if you feel like uh, just to add like assign the new list to the old one no you can't do that what you need to do just you need to write first i need to uh, execute this one then uh, maybe i have apple orange and mango right and the list too i have dog and maybe i'm going to add elephant right and then I have take one elephant, right? So let me print it from the second. Okay, list should not be focused, right? I will add a uh, animal, animal list. Too, okay. So now I want to update both of them. So fruit list dot update. I'm going to use animal list, right? So yes, let's see. Is it going to work or not? Yes. Now let me print the fruit list. So you can see uh, we got apple, orange, mango, dog and elephant. So this is how these are the operations we have in basic syntax of pythons, right? And list, see, double and dictionary. Now we will see some of the project in python, right? Let me go back to the presentation. Start now we will see some of the python projects first we will start with word count but there is a business problem we have for that we need to make the project okay so basically a content company who works with multiple stakeholders to make their content right and according to that they have so many freelancers as well who are actually writing the content for them okay so now they want to pay them according to the what they have written okay let me give you an example right suppose you are a technical content writer or you are a blog writer travel writer right so the company has different types of stakeholders for them right suppose you want some technical content that will be done by the company and company has some freelancer worker right maybe they write thousands word and they say it for each word we are going to pay you 50 paisa right so for that they actually need to have a word count okay so counting the word it's it's manually counting the words it's very uh, time consuming and it's very hectic right so they want to make a program which actually accepts the text file and it will count all the words it has right according to the count that company is going to pay the freelancer okay now you can see so the solution is so they want to make an automatic system which can count the word from a text file automatically right so what it will do first it will read the text file using python so how can we solve the case study so for that problem solution first we need to write read the text file okay using python libraries then we need to store the whole document in a variable Okay, we can store the whole document in a variable and then we need to split the document using split function. Okay, so we will use split function. Again, this is a predefined function in Python that we are going to use. Then we will count the number of words in the variable, right? This is how we are going to use word counting for that particular company. Let's see how we can do that in the Google Colab. So now we are going to use word count from a text file. Okay, the project we are going to implement. 
to implement that project first we need to have a data set that data set is a text file data set so i use the harpers ascii text file data set and i upload that text data in my dropbox so how we are going to fetch it using wget command right let me fetch my data first from that dropbox you also can use that okay so you can see we got harpers ascii.txt that is fetched in my content folder you can see this is done okay now what we are going to use we are going to use open command right we are going to use open command to open our text file right so yeah just let me do that maybe this part we will do later first let's understand how you can open the file a text file right okay see i open i give open function then i put the path of my file right and then how you want to use it i want to read it right i use r okay if you want to write it there is a separate option for that if you want to write and read both you will get other options as well okay so we using open function you can write in your text file you can read it in your text file all of the like all of the thing you can do it okay now what i did i use a i i want to take a list in the list and i want to add some elements after after uh, some time in that list right so i use a c list right so you can see how you can use a, how you can actually initialize a empty list that is c is equals to which bracket right that square bracket i'm going to use this is how you can initialize a empty list now i'm going to use a for loop that will iterate through my documents right through my text file that if variable so what i did for x that index in if and then i'm going to i just want to print text that i want to see that what we have basically so maybe uh, okay fine let me just let me do that okay so i will see that what actually i am getting in part index and then whatever i am getting i just want to append it how we can append it c dot append okay then we are going to split the data right in x we are getting all the sentences right but now i want to split them how can i split them uh, through each one i use dot split function and in the split function in the parenthesis i actually pass the space for each word we use a space right so the space will be my indicator that if there is a space please cut it through right this is how we are going to count the word let's see so you can see for x we are getting all the lines right sorry for the x we are getting all the lines now we will see what actually we store in c okay right these are the full file i have that text file right now let me try and print c what actually i have split it here you can see what i got we got project and each and every word we got separately and this is how actually you can count the letter you have in your data set okay now what i did i use a counter that is t okay in using counter we are going to count how many words we have okay so what we will do we will again use a for loop that is for i in range and i'm going to take the length of the c right if i told you if you want to take the length of the list we use length function so length of the c and i just want to increment my counter that is d is equals to d plus 1 right after the execution we will get how many words we have in the text file right let me just execute that yes we got 3939 total word count for our text file c okay again we got the total so for uh, each and every freelancer for that what they can do they just need to put the path of the file and everything will be done by the 
program right and according to the count they can pay to their freelancer this is how we can solve their problem and this is the first project we have done in python and we will see couple of more project in python to understand python more easily more deeply okay so in our last project we have seen that how you can count the word using python right it was simple i guess i don't think that you guys have any doubt if you guys have any doubt just let me know in the comment section for that we can help you out to solve the doubt so now we have a second project that is how you can build a game using python right so there is a young game developer who is basically a beginner in the python but he actually feels good when he start doing something regarding game so he plans to wants to make up his first game using python okay so he decided to make a word guessing game using python let's see how we can actually uh, implement a guessing like you need to just guess your word how can we do that right so first we need to import random why we need to import random because random help us to pick the word randomly i will show you why when we are using random in our project right now i have a word that is apple oracle amazon microsoft or maybe orange i'm going to add one word and if you have more words in your list you can add them but for the simplicity sake of the simplicity i am using least amount of data in our list right i have cat as well i have dog as well so this is my list right word list so you can say the vocabulary we have for our game so it's going to give you a data in between that only right now we will use guess word guess word is a variable where you will just choose a random word right you are not going to say use apple take oracle or take amazon right the random dot choice is is actually using this function to take a random data from your data set okay so let's see what actually that guess word we have. you can see it take orange let me execute one more it will take something different yeah it took dog right this is how random dot choice function is actually working in python right now we are going to use the hint what that hint is going to give you i told you guys that for guess word guess word is basically a variable right and if you want to take a first element from that variable you can use a indexing so for my first word for your hint it will give you the first word and the last word for the last word maybe you can use the length of that and i use minus 1 the negative indexing okay so let's see it took dog right it is supposed to give d and g right it give me d and g right now we are going to take a list that is store underscore g underscore l where we are going to store all the guess word right i am going to show you how we can do that and we have try p variable where i am going to give you six times chance you can guess the word if you can't guess the word within six chance you are fail right now what i am using input input function is basically used in python to take a user input in the word game we really need to take user input right it's all about the user right so we use input and then in the input we are going to pass a message that it will going to show in the console so i said please enter your name now i am going to print that welcome to the game world and i am going to print your name right i am going to welcome you to our new game okay and print six attempts so we are going to give you six attempts right so let me write it we are going to give you six attempts for the guessing Okay, so let me just 
just execute it. Okay. So it's asking what is my name. So my name is Sampriti. So I'm going to add Sampriti, right? So that time it's going to give me a output that welcome to the game world Sampriti. We are going to give you six attempt for the guessing, right? Okay. Right. So this is how your program will take the user input. So you can see, yes. We are going to give you six items for the case. Now we are going to use a for loop. You can see for our indexing is case in range. We are taking range because it will go till six, right? And I am using while true. When we, when we use while true, when your condition is true. So when my try p is six, right? When my guess index, like it will iterate through all the like till 6, right? Till my guess is 6 and my condition is true, then what it will do? It will take a variable that is later and give you that uh, user input it will take, right? I'm going to say input and then guess the later, right? I'm saying please guess the later, okay? Now, if length of later is equals to equals to 1, then we will break it. Right. So, otherwise else, oops, the guess was guess a later. Right. This is what actually we are checking when we are saying one. Right. I I give d. Okay. So that time the later length will be one. We, but if I give some pretty the full word. Right. That time the length of the later is not one. So first we need to check that whatever the uh, input we got from the user, the length of that is one. If it's one, then break. And otherwise it will say, sorry, uh, this later, please give a later, right? And we are breaking from the while loop, right? Good. Next, if later in guest word, print yes. So if you have the later, okay? So this later we are getting, right? So you can see in the guess later, right? The guess uh, later what we have. Wait a second. Sorry, the guess word. So guess word is the random word, right? Suppose for dog. Okay. In the guess word, if we have that particular alphabet, then we will pick yes, right? And we will append that later to our list store GL, right? And otherwise it will going to say, Print no, sorry, that later is not there. Okay, so this is how you will get all total six chance, right? Maybe this is a dog, you are writing A, B, C, D, E. So when you write D, it will again say, okay, this is yes, and now you can uh, go forward. But if you are uh, printing, uh, like if you are giving all the wrong words, still six, it will say, sorry, there is the, your uh, chances are finished, right? Now, after you see, okay, this is dog, you write D, right? So, again, we are using uh, if loop, we are saying that if guess is equals to is equals to 3, right? What is guess? This index number, okay? When my guess is equals to equals to 3, that time I am going to print, would you like to have a clue? I mean, you already uh, guess 3, uh, times, maybe one times you are right, maybe twice you are wrong, right? So now I am asking, would you like to have a clue, right? If you say it, and again, if you like to have a clue, so that time we are taking Y and N, okay? That Y can be in capital letter or the small letter. So what we are doing, we are taking that if clue request, that clue request, that variable, the user is giving yes or no, that clue request dot lower. We use lower function to smaller our, maybe you put a capitalized word, right? So I want, I make it in the smaller one, right? So dot lower we are using to small your uh, alphabet, right? Then we use that dot start with Y. If you write yes, okay? So it starts with Y, it will check the first character. Okay, you can use Y and you can use ES as well. So, at any way, it will take the first character of your 
input right user input so if it's y then print clue okay and the hint i told you for the hint we have the first letter and the last sorry the first character and the last character of the guest word right for the dog we have d and g right we then print the hint okay else i am going to say if you say no i don't want any clue for that i am going to say you are confident right okay fine okay good so this is how we are going to execute our code lastly what you will see now let's see what you have guessed so far and you have guessed then what we will do we are actually using a list that is stored so underscore g underscore l that list we are going to length of the list and we will say this is the length of your list and this is the word you have uh, like actually uh, say correctly right now we are going to print the letters r okay now i want to see is show you that what are the letters you have actually uh, guessed right that is store gl right in the store gl i have that it will print okay then what we will do we will just now we will say write the whole word okay as you already uh, guessed this letter so it's expected that you got the word right so i will ask you to write the whole word when you write the whole word we will again convert it to dot lower and we will actually see that lower that word you have given in the user word is equals to equals to the guess word the random word is chosen by our program right suppose for my case it is dog if you say right dog it will convert it to the smaller one that dog and then it will check if this two variables are same or not if yes it will say congrats you are correct else it will say sorry the answer was uh, the actual answer and print uh, uh, the actual answer that's all right and then it need to just print uh, like uh, press a enter to exit like just to get out from the program right now we will execute the whole program let's see what we get right now i need to write my name so i'm going to write sorry not my name guess the letter right so i'm going to guess the letter maybe e i know this is dog but this is being a uh, like gamer i don't know what the word is so i'm going to write random word e so it says no no e so maybe i am going to use d it's a no why okay fine we i am going to use o. yes o is there so i am going to use r no okay so again i am going to use o okay right fine so it's asked me would you like to have a clue i said o but it does not understand i don't write yes right so it said you are confident it's us uh, like it actually takes no i don't want a clue right again guess the word let's, let's just try using o okay now they are asking to guess the letter maybe orange i don't know okay so it says the guess the letter i write orange is it oops please guess a letter okay let me again do that no okay fine what is giving me now let's see what have you guessed so far you have guessed two letters correctly okay i have uh, used the o o right i don't know what is it so maybe again uh what we have in o right let's 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 just do the maybe oracle i'm just cheating basically as i know the vocabulary of that so i am cheating but for the gamer no till i am not right so the answer was dog and please enter to leave the program okay right so this is how the whole program is going to act so let me play the whole game again so again we have word we have case word i know this is dog i don't want dog let me add something okay this time this is microsoft right let me get the hint that is a and t mm, okay let me give my number num name sorry that is some pt okay 
Okay, so yes, thank you for coming to the game. Now, let me just use it. The first letter, I know this is Microsoft. In, it's in no, right? Okay, I see one more thing. So, I when I'm giving a capital letter, it's saying no. So, I don't use dot lower over there, right? So, for that, it is saying no, it's not that, right? I use I is saying yes. I said C, it said yes. I said R, okay. So, they were asking for the clue again. I missed it. Fine, uh, fine. Let's see again. Yes. Okay. Let me add. Okay. Now I already used E M I C R O. Right? They are asking me to like write the whole word. So I am going to write Microsoft. Okay. They said congrats. You are correct. And then I'm going to just put enter just to leave the program. So this is how we actually use the word counter. Right? We use how can we use word counter? This is how we are actually make we make the guess the word. I hope you guys can understand how we make the word count project and how can you make the game that you guess the word, right? So I hope you guys don't have any doubt regarding this two project. But please, if you guys have any doubt, just let me know in the comment section below so that I can help you out. Now we will see one more project that is calculator. Okay, so we have a uh, John, right? We have John. John wants to make a calculator to solve all his mathematical problem. He does not like to do math at all. Instead of that, he is interested in programming. So basically, he is his not at all into maths and he loves to do programming and he thought he can get a solution to not to do maths what he can do he can maybe probably make a program that will do the maths for himself right so he actually was thinking how can i do all the calculation automatically so he came up with a solution that he can make a calculator right now we will see how can you make a calculator using python so making a calculator we need to make some functions but what is function Function is basically when you want to repeat a particular block. Okay. Uh, suppose uh, maybe I let me let me take an example. Basically, we use loops when you repeat a particular block. And for function, uh, for the perfect example, if you can want to say, suppose if you want to do a uh, Walk. If you want to do some addition, some multiplication, some uh, some subtraction, right? Multiple times, but you don't need to write that multiple times. So that time we create a function that will take the data from you and it will do the work for you, right? So here, what we will do for a calculator, we are going to make a function for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, right? So what we will do, we will take our function and how we are going to actually uh, initialize our function in uh, Python, right? We use def keyword. So whenever you are going to make a function in Python, you need to write def, 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 and then the method name, the function name. And function name, if you say the convention, we always start with the small letter. So for first one, I want to add, I want to make an add function. So I write add, it will take the two parameter. So two parameter, your two numbers, right? So maybe you can use for three, four, five, six as well. So for me, just for the simplicity, I use two parameters, right? So I'm going to pass x and y. And what it will return? It will return x plus y to me. Okay, now I'm going to use subtract. So for the subtract, again, I'm making a function that is div subtract and we use x and y the same way I'm passing two data x and y and it will return x minus y, right? And I'm going to make a multiply function that is going to take x and y and it will return x into y, right? Lastly, we will use divide function. In the divide function, what we will do? We will again take the x and y and we will return x divided by y, right? Now we will, what we will do, we will write select option 
and we are going to give one is for add, two is for subtract, three is for multiply and four is for divide, right? Again, we are going to use while true. Well, my condition is true, that time I am going to use choice, right? Choice is equals to input, that uh, in user input I want to take, input, enter, one, two, three, four. Right in between one to three four, you need to put otherwise it will be a valid op invalid option. Right now, I'm going to check if my choice in we use in one two three four will be my string. Right here, we are taking one two three four as string and we will match the string. Right if choice in one two three four, right then I'm going to ask you, right first data of yours you want to do whatever the calculation it is right so for that what we will do first we are taking input my input will be a string but i need to change it to float so what i will do i will pass that string into float function right then i will say please put the second number right for the second function we are doing the same thing so now my number is a float number now we will see if Choice is equals to is equals to string one. Okay, so what we will do? We will pass that num one and num two to the add function. And how we will call add function? We just need to write add, and in parentheses we need to pass two numbers that we got from the user. That num one and num two. If we use elif, if your choice is two, so what we will do? We will do the same thing. And now I want to do the subtraction, right? For num1 and num2 and we will call the function of subtract, right? If your choice is 3, what we will do? We will call our multiply function, right? And if our choice is 4, we need to call that divide function. And then if it's not, then we are going to say, sorry, this is an invalid input, right? Let me just execute the code for you. Right, so you can see select operation first one add two, uh, yeah, two is subtract, three is multiply, four is divide. So enter the choice. I'm going to write two to subtract the first number, I'm going to give 40, okay, and the second number, I'm going to give 21. So you can see it's giving 21 with 40 minus 21, that is 19. So I will execute all the function to understand to make you understand how it's going to work so first uh, then i want to add right for the first number i'm going to give 40 and the second number i'm going to give 20 it's supposed to be 60 yes we got the number that is 60 right we have done subtract and app now we are going to multiply so i want to first number is okay for the multiply i need to use three option three now the first number will be 50 now the second number i want is two so we got 100 right our calculator is actually working good and it will actually help john as well right okay now the fourth one we want to divide it so i'm going to use the fourth option and the first number will be 20 and i want to divide it by four yes you can see, okay, sorry, I use the multiply one. I need to use the divide one. Let me execute it once more. Okay, so this is 4. Okay, so first number will be 40 and the second number will be 2. Yes, you can see I got 20. So this is how our uh, actually calculator is uh, working, right? So I think you guys understand how our actually our code is working right so we done with the third project of python for beginners right now we will see our last project that is face recognition using python so here is the statement we have that olivia being a final year student wants to make a face recognition using python the system will automatically detect all the faces from the given in input but how can you do that? Actually, she is in a confusion. How can I make a project which detect face from uh, images, right? So here is the solution that we can use OpenCV. 
But before start this project, let me give you a small introduction. What is face recognition is in Python, right? So facial recognition is a part of computer vision techniques. And when I'm talking about computer vision, what does that stand for? And how is related to our life, right? Let me take you. A, let me give you an example for that. Our generation is quite familiar with social media platforms, right? And we all share our memories with our virtual friends, and we love to do that. But did you ever think when you upload some new photos in those social media sites, how they give you the suggestion to tag your friends automatically without doing any extra efforts? Here comes the computer vision technology in the scenario, right? So what is computer vision? Computer vision is a process to give the ability to the computer to see as a human. It is the part of computer science which is focused on replicating the integrate parts of human visual system. It helps to identify and process the objects in images through the computer. The whole idea for the computer vision is to make an automatic replica of the human eye, which is more efficient than human eyes, right? Before we jump into the how computer vision works, let's see uh, what is the library we are going to use over here, right? There are some predefined packages and libraries are there in our Python, right? One of the most important and popular libraries is OpenCV. It helps us to develop a system which can process images and real-time video using computer vision. So basically, if you want to do some uh, real-time video object detection also, that you can do using OpenCV, right? It's a vast so library. You can do so many things using OpenCV, right? OpenCV focused on image processing, real-time video capturing to detect faces and objects. Right. So let's see a background of OpenCV. What is the background of OpenCV? How it actually invented? OpenCV was invented by Intel in 1999 by Gary Batsky. The first release was in the in, uh, year 2000. OpenCV stands for Open Source Computer Vision Library. Okay. The library is based on the optimized C, C++, and it supports Java and Python along with C++ through interfaces. Right. So these are the uh, language uh, is supported by OpenCV, that is C, C++, and Python, right? OpenCV is one of the most popular and successful libraries for computer vision, and it has an immense number of users because of its simplicity, processing time, and high demand in computer vision applications, right? OpenCV Python is like a Python wrapper around the C++ implementation, and OpenCV has more than 2,500 implemented algorithms which are freely available for commercial purpose as well. So these are the main reasons why OpenCV is getting popular day by day. And it is very easy to use for OpenCV. When I'm going to show you the project, you will understand how easy OpenCV is, right? So that time you will feel like using OpenCV rather than other, other algorithm or other libraries, okay? So let's have a look at the uh, application of OpenCV. Right, so OpenCV is widely used in medical image analysis as well. Right, so medical industry is very popular for the image processing purpose. So we use OpenCV over there as well. So suppose we need to identify the brain tumor. Right, so every single day, almost thousands of patients are dealing with the brain tumors. There are many software where using OpenCV to detect the stage of the tumor using image segmentation technique. And one of the application is RSIP vision, which builds probability map to localize the tumor and uses the deformable models to obtain the tumor bound boundaries with zero level energy, right? So these are the main application we are using OpenCV, widely using and actually it is helping our everyday life. If actu it is actually helping us to uh, reduce the manpower and the cost as well, right? And now comes the object detection. Detecting object from the images is one of the most popular application. So let me give you an example what actually I'm talking about object detection. So you want to detect a person sitting on a two-wheeler vehicle, right? So you, we all know that uh, if we want to, uh, if, if you are just riding a two-wheeler, so you have to wear a helmet, right? So if you want to detect that, that what is the uh, percentage of people, they are actually using helmet when they are riding a bike or two-wheeler, right? So in that case, we can make a system to detect helmet when that person is in a two-wheeler, right? Now, uh, your model is going to check that what are the person they are actually traveling without helmet, 
okay so it's a actually a defensible crime so uh, after you can make a proper system when uh, you 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 can detect that some of the uh, person is not using helmet so you can just find them right this is a online application you can make that can help the traffic police as well and the uh, and our society as well right so these are the application we can use using open cv right now how can you install open cv i will show you how can you install open cv it's a normal pip install open cv python right so let's go to the code and see how we can do the uh, whole project today we will use google colab right as we are using google colab i hope you guys uh, like become quite comfortable with google colab so google colab also supports open cv okay so here first we need to use google colab dot patches import cv cv2 underscore i am show so it is basically for particularly for google cola but if you want to go for some other id like anaconda or pycharm that time you need to use cv2 dot i am show to print your uh, respected photo the images right so yeah and now first we will see how a images can be read by a open cv right so machine convert images into an array okay so first you need to do uh let me do it for you first you need to write p install open cv right but for google cola this is already there so you don't need to do this it's not matching distribution form for open cv it's showing because for google cola they're using some other uh parts as well so you if you are using uh, open cv in google cola you need to just write import cv2 and you need to import from google dot cola patches import cv2 under, underscore i am show right now if you want to read the image how can you do that to read the image you need to write cv2 cv2 is the library dot i am read function a i am read function is actually help you to read your images it converts your images into an array right and this arrays are a pixels the pixel you have in your data okay and you can read your image uh, as a rgb value that red green and blue otherwise you can read your picture as uh, gray as well right these are the two option we got right okay so now let's see that how we can do that so here already i have uploaded my images right in the google colab now i want to read them so if you want to read them you can see i just give the path right first write cv2 dot i am read and the path the path of your image i give that right now i want to use i want to just print that if you want to print that what do you need to do you need to write cv2 underscore underscore i am show and then you need to find like give the path, like the variable of your image right let me execute that okay now you can see i got the image this image i take as my input image now if you want to see that what we have in img right so what actually they did so it it will be a array okay you can see this is the array of your image right input image okay so this is how actually open cv reads a image it convert your image into an array right now if you want to convert your image into grayscale how you can do that so for that we, what we do we use cv2 dot cv2 cvt color and then we pass the cvt color is our function and then we pass the image then we pass the image that i already uh, stored that into image variable so i write img then comma cv2 dot color uh, underscore bgr2 gray right so what i want i want my image into grayscale right so that time we use cv2 dot color underscore bgr2 gray right so let's see so grayscale is basically will convert your image into a gray grayscale right so let's see what we got you can see we got this so grayscale in this array and this array are not same right this array you can see all all over the colors that are rgb colors and here you can see these are the grayscale colors right now i want to see the grayscale image so how can i do that again cv2 underscore i am show and you need to pass your gray 
your variable name gray, right? Okay. You can see we got it that as a grayscale. But if you don't want to use CV two dot uh, color BG two gray, right? So I want to use my CV two dot IMD, uh, like to change your image into grayscale. How can you do that, right? So let me show you that as well. So these are the option you have. At any way, you can change your uh, image into grayscale. So what I need to do? Maybe I am going to write gray two. That is a new variable. Then I am going to write cv two dot right. I am read. Okay. Now I am going to pass i m g comma zero. Right. Let's see what I am going to get. And then I am going to print or I am going to show my new. I am getting a error. So let's see why I am getting the error. Okay, let me just. Okay, I'm so sorry. I need to pass the path, right? For I told you for I am read, you need to pass the path, not the variable name, right? Okay, okay, right. Let's see. Yes, you can see we got our image into grayscale. So this is how you can use CV two dot color as well or CV two dot IMD. Or if you this is the this is the parameter basically. If you put zero, it will return a grayscale image, and if you put a one, it will return a colored image. Right? You can see this is a colored image. So this variable, this parameter is basically used for which one you want. Want to write one is RGB, one is zero to when you put that in a zero, so your array will be under zero to one, right? Let's see. Let me just print the three two. So you will get what I am getting over here. Yes. So we got the grayscale colors, right? These are the grayscale color. Okay. And before that, we used to get the RGB color. So this is how you can use OpenCV. Okay. Now we will see. How you can detect a face using OpenCV, right? And and one more thing, if you want to just shape your image, right? How can you do that? You want if you want to reshape your image, right? I don't want this shape of my image, okay? So how can you do that? So reshaping image is also can be done using OpenCV, or you can see the shape of your image as well, right? So let's see. Uh, I want to see. The shape of my image first. So let's see how can we do that. Yes, you can see I got image dot shape. So I got four twenty seven five hundred and three. This three is basically showing you that your image is a RGB image, right? So image. Uh, okay, fine. Let me just show the image as well, so that you guys can understand which one I'm talking about. I'm taking so many variables, right? So let's see. Okay, so you can see I just print the colored image, right? So colored image is there, and we got the shape of it. And for the shape, we got three. This three stands for the RGB value, right? Let's see about the next one, the gray one, right? So we have gray as well, right? So CV two underscore I am show, and I'm going to pass the gray skill image, right? And now I want to see the shape of the image. Yes, so you guys can see we don't get any RGB value over here, right? We only get the four twenty seven and five hundred. This is how you can understand that your data is basically your image is basically a grayscale image, or your image is basically a RGB image, right? So suppose now I want to detect the face of the image, right? So it will detect the face, the face we have in the image. How can we do that? Okay. So here we are going to use a predefined file that is uh, used that is already defined in the 
open cv library so we are going to use use har cascade file i know you guys have a i'd like a doubt that what is a har cascade file so basically har cascade file is a machine learning object detection algorithm which is used to identify object in an image or video right and also it is a machine learning based approach where a cascade function is trained on a lot of positive and negative images and then it is used to detect the object in other images right now har cascade file in open cv is basically a classifier this classifier is used to detect particular object from a input image okay and we, now we are going to use the frontal face default .xml. This her cascade file comes in a .xml file, right? And I already in, upload that XML file to my code, and you will get all the code uh, in the description as well. And you will understand that what XML file I was talking about, right? So using just to upload a uh, her cascade file, what you need to do? We need to use cv2. Cascade classifier method, right? This dot cascade classifier method is going to read the har cascade dot XML file, right? Let me do that. Okay, now we are going to detect the face in our image. How can you do that? We use faces variable and then we use that face cascade which reads the XML file, right? Because I want to detect my front face, okay? So for that, we use frontal face default .xml file, right? Now I, I said I want to take that variable where I read the XML file. So face cascade, face cascade dot detect multiscale, okay? So this uh, function we are using when we are actually trying to take the multiscale value, right? So we are going to use dot detect multiscale and we will pass gray image, right? It only works with the gray image. You can't do these things with the RGB image, right? I'm passing gray. Now I'm going to use a for loop where I will get this one, two, three, four, right? This part. So let me show the presentation. You can see we used to take this part this part, this part and this part, okay? So, these four part we take when we try to uh, like recognize or detect a face, right? So, what we will do, we will take four variable for that. So, I take for x, y, w, h in faces, right? Now, what I will do? I will use cv2 dot rectangle. So, dot rectangle is used for just to take this four part of your face, Okay, now I'm going to pass my image. Okay, so I'm going to pass my image and then I'm going to write x, y, comma, x plus w, comma, y plus h. And then I will write 255 as we know the range of the uh, image and range of the RGB is 255. I will write 255, 0, 0 and then 2. Right, now I'm going to write cv2 underscore im show and then img. Right, and then we will write cv2 dot wait key because maybe it will kill all other uh, all other cv2 uh, components we have. Right, so let's see what I we will get over there. Yes, we got it right. You can see the our actually our program is able to find properly what is the face, what is the face we have in the whole picture. Right, so it's able to find it out where is your face in the whole picture right this is how actually it's a pre-trained model so we don't need to do anything we just need to write the code that how can you uh, like how can you use that cascade hard cascade xml file right now i'm going to show you if you have a multiple face in the picture how can you do that so i have a picture already i uh, download a picture that has almost six different expressions right and with six different faces. So let's see in one image if we have more than one face, is it able to understand that these are the these are the also like face we have in the image, right? So let's see how can we do that. So first we will again load the image into IMG and then we will just show the image first. So let's see our image is loaded. Okay, our image is loaded, right? Now we are going to again convert that picture into grayscale using cv2.colorbg2 gray, right? Okay, so let's see. Okay, and let me just print that as well. Yes. 
yes we got our image into grayscale okay now i'm going to do the same thing what we did that faces equals to face cascade dot detect multi scale the multi scale i want to capture for my face and then i will use a for loop right and then we are going to print it okay right so yes you guys can see our model is able to find the different faces in one pictures as well it is quite uh, a good model you can say this is why opencv is becoming popular every every day right so this is how we are going to use opencv if you want to use uh, like just to detect a face from your particular image right you can use opencv if you want to just detect face from videos as well for that you just need to do some some extra lines of code you can do that as well right so this is our last project we have come to the end of the uh, session as well so we have learned so far the face detection using python we have learned word counter uh, we have learned some other uh, projects as well i hope this helps you guys and it helps to understand how python works uh, what is the basic knowledge you need to have uh, if you just go for a python development in, like if you choose your career as a python developer right so if you guys have any input just let us know in the comment section below and if you guys have any doubt just let us know in the comment section as well so we can get back to you